All right, if you want to see stats like this from your Chevy Bolt EV, all you need is a ODB Bluetooth or Wi-Fi one and a phone that has Torque. I have Torque Pro, so I'm not certain if you need Torque Pro or not because I have it. Several things you need to do. Here's a link to the website that I have down in the description. It tells you basically what apps you need, what you have to do to get it to work, and how what kind of devices work with it. Well, I don't think that mine is any of the ones on the description, but it works just fine for me. Logging, where to put your files, so with Torque. Basically, you need that CSV in a certain folder, and you might have to show hidden directories, but I can go through that real quick on my computer. Otherwise, you can install an app on your phone that can view it, like a file explorer. So here's the, the PIDs, the PIDs. This is kind of what it reads with Torque to know what things are what. And it's it's a pretty big file. I mean. That's not just three things, that's a bunch. So, first step. Let's kill the app. First step, we're going to plug in the phone. And pull down the top menu bar. I'm going to click on Android System Settings and we are going to transfer files to the device. Now back on the computer, we get this little warning saying that the device is ready. We'll pull up the Pixel 3, go to the internal storage, and there should be a folder called .torque. And then inside of .torque there is an extended PIDs and you're basically going to copy this CSV file right into that folder. That's the extent of what you have to do with the computer. Now we're going back to the phone. Don't need any of this, we can just unplug the phone. I wish the phone capturing, screen capturing worked better than it does. All right, so now we can go out of this app, open up the Torque app, go to the bottom where it's a little settings wrench, click settings, regular settings, and then there is a manage extra PIDs, PIDs, sensors, and we're going to pull the top right menu bar button down, and then say add predefined set, and in there you should see the Chevy Bolt from that file we added before. You can just click that and it will bring them all in. So now if you go into like the regular viewer and you have an open area of a screen, you can say add to display and click something. And now you'll have a whole bunch of extra options in here. And right now they're not lit up because it's not connected to my car because it's right here. So I'm gonna go connect to the car. So if you didn't know before, on the Chevy Bolt, the ODB port is just down left side of the driver compartment there. And if I open up Torque, so if I open up Torque on my phone, now that it's plugged in, I will get some data like the battery temperature. I'm not going to get it all because the car is not on. If it's charging, it seems to give you a lot more data too. So I'm going to turn the car on and we will see fantastic Chevy beeping noises, which you can't see. All right, once the car is on, you can see we have a lot more data flowing in. We have the air temperature, battery temperature, cabin temperature, all of those things you can just add by clicking and holding, saying add to display. I picked bar graph for some reason, 
and then browse through the whole list of what you want. So we can say, let's add in the battery cabin heater. We're gonna do a large display. There you go. So now if I turn on, well, that's not the, if I turn on the heat system, we get a magical number and it might max out at like 7,500 watts because it's probably not very warm in the garage. It says it's 40 degrees. But well, once the car heats up, that won't that won't stay at 7,500 watts. So right now it's running 960 RPM on the battery cooler, which is also a battery heater. Battery temperature is 41 degrees. Battery state of charge is 55.7. Um, battery coolant is 39.2 two degrees which is about the exact same temperature as the garage so it's it's heating up but it doesn't need to kind of want to experiment with this more and collect more data because I know if you plug into level 3 when it's negative 28 degrees like the previous video it goes really slow I'm kind of curious to wonder if you plug into level 2 and run the preconditioning if it will heat up more than 40 the battery more than 40 degrees I know that it stopped at 40 degrees Fahrenheit and then just basically let it cool back down or slowly heat up with the, the DC fast charge. I've watched other videos on YouTube that show some guy parking his car in, you know, 20 degree weather on a level 2 charger, plugging it in, leaving it there for over an hour, and he still only got like 15 kW going into his battery when he plugged into level 3, which is not fast because it can do 50. Yeah, see the battery, the cabin heater is already slowed down. It's cat's favorite, a box. It's too bad, it's cat's worst nightmare, it's closed. 